Hello there, welcome along. This is another tip tutorial from tipsquirrel.com. As always, I should remind you that I'm not a Photoshop trainer, but I do like to pass on any tips and tricks that I find along my own learning curve. Okay, let's get on with today's then. And we're going to be looking at the blend if. Now, I'm going to show you how I've set this up to start with, and then we'll get into the blend if. First of all, I've got a gradient layer that you can see on top. Then underneath that, I've got a text layer. Now I've made this into a smart object, which I've then given a smart filter of a Gaussian blur. And if I zoom right in, you can see the blur there, how it goes from the black to the white, and that'll become relevant in just a little while. Okay, let me put the gradient back on. Now, if I double click to the side of the layer where there's no writing, up comes the layer style dialog box, and that's where you find the blend if. Now we've got a choice, we can either work on this layer or the underlying layer and first of all I'm going to demonstrate this using the underlying layer. Now what this does is it blends the colour that is being worked on, which in this instance is grey or black to white. Now we know that our underlying layer, our text layer, is a black to white layer. So if I bring this slider across you'll see that it reveals it. And it started very quickly there, so I'm going to go back and forth so you can see how it's working and it brings in that amount of that colour and you can see that it brings it in quite gradually on this one because of that Gaussian blur and the degrees of grey. Now what I can do is I can hold down the Alt key and click on this arrow and that splits it and what that does is it makes it a nice gradual kind of blend from one to the other and I can move these two arrows independently. Now I'm getting into the white there so I'm going to back off just a little bit and you can see that there's that transition between the two, which is quite handy. OK, I'm going to hold down the Alt key again, and you'll notice that the Cancel button changes to a Reset. I click that, and we're all back to how we were. So let's work on this layer. Now we've got a nice blue gradient, so I'm going to blend if it's blue. So I'm going to choose the blue channel here. And again, I'm going from the dark side, and I'm going to... My, uh, hold the Alt key. Sorry, I'm stumbling on myself there because I was thinking of Star Wars when I said going from the dark side. Okay, I'm going to hold down the Alt key again and I'm going to split that arrow and bring it across and you'll see how it's a very, very gradual transition from one to the other. Now I can bring that dark part back in. I'm sorry, I'm thinking Star Wars again. I'm starting to giggle. Bring that dark part back up again and we can make the transition as wide or as short as we like. Now, what's often happened, I'm going to reset that again, what's often happened is somebody's gone onto the red channel and they've been playing about here and they've gone, well hang on a minute, I'm still getting it even though I'm using red. Why is it altering red and not the blue? Well, let me show you very quickly. Again, I'm going to reset that and click OK. Even though we're on a gradient of blue, if we go into the channels, you can see that there's still information on the red channel as well as the green and the blue. But it was the blue that we wanted to target specifically. And that's what we did by choosing the blue channel when we did our blend if. So by choosing the blue, we are targeting just that channel, which makes it uh, in, in perhaps not so noticeable here, but in other scenarios, you'd really notice it. OK, so again, I'm going to reset, click OK. And I'm going to show you another example. If I get just turn off that group and turn on this group and you can see I've got a landscape I've got some more words and I've got my gradient back again now in my landscape layer I'm going to double click to bring up the blend if and I'm going to target specifically the blue channel once again and I want to go and take away the sky really and show the underlying words and gradient so I'm going to go for the light end this time um, and I'm going to go from the white so as I get the clouds and then into the darker blues to get the sky. So again, because I'm targeting that and I've split it again, because I'm targeting that, it's a very clean job. And if I bring this in a bit further, a very nice, clean job, very easily done. Now I'm going to click OK on that. And then if I control and spacebar to get my zoom tool, if I go into... Here. You can see how clean that is, but then if we come down to the trees, it's 
very easy to see how well it's gone around the trees done a very very detailed job so we could have gone into masking the landscape layer but this was far easier we made Photoshop do that for us and target a particular area so there we go that's the blend if that's another tutorial from tipsquirrel.com over with if you've got any favorite tips or tricks that you'd like to share with us or maybe we could make them into a tutorial then please let us know blog at tipsquirrel.com is the easiest way you'll also find me on twitter twitter.com forward slash tipsquirrel but visit tipsquirrel.com because there's lots of great writers there all contributing to the site and we'd love to see you